Greetings from my kitchen pulpit right here in Southwest Oklahoma. It's time to knead bread for the master. My name, like I said, is Karen Plammer, and I trust you're having a great day, and you're just wanting to worship the Lord today, and this is what we're going to do. I'm going to worship the Lord by kneading this bread and giving you the devotion the Lord has laid on my heart. This bread is going to be kneaded for 10 minutes. I have the, uh, got the timer set. All right, the older to teach the younger. You can tell I'm one of those silver citizens, and I'm thankful. You know, silver has value and worth, and uh, I'm thankful that because we've known the Lord and lived these many years, well, the Lord has helped us, and we've grown in the Lord. I pray that we have, and I know that we have because He helps us to grow. And as we read His Word, and we pray, and we seek His face, and walk with Him daily, you just can't help but grow in the Lord and want to tell others. All right, rejoice. My sheep know my voice. You know, I, we're going to talk about some things today that I hope will be a blessing to your life. It has been to, to me. and something the Lord brought to my mind that could be uh, something that the devil is using to torment people with and to think that they can't make it. But I'll tell you what, the Lord is all, he has his marvelous word for us. And, oh, yes, I, got, I, I have a new apron, and I hope you like it. Let's see. So you can see it's got the little little bows here and in the pockets and anyway I've got another one word and it's it's red and so I went ahead and I've got these so you've got uh, the stripes here with the uh, with the checks so I hope it doesn't drive you crazy but anyhow rejoice my sheep know my voice and this is taken from John chapter 10 verse 4 and 5 in the New Living Translation after he has gathered his own flock he walks ahead of them and they follow him talking about the shepherd they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Oh, hallelujah. We can know, we can know the voice of our Savior. And I, what I was particularly speaking, thinking of, the Lord dropped in my heart, you know, artificial intelligence, commonly known as AI, is a real concern for people. It can literally mimic the voice, uh, just almost like identical uh, to a person. And the Lord impressed on my heart, there are people, uh, the children of his, that are, that are concerned, and others may become concerned, that, they, that you know, AI can get in and can, de can deceive them. But I'll tell you, God's Word was written way before AI, artificial intelligence, and just we can know that this particular scripture applies to us. He said, my sheep know my voice. They know his voice. After he's gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them. He doesn't drive them. Sheep are not driven. Uh, they, they are, he leads them and to good places. And they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. I'm telling you, we know the voice of God by the word of God. When it's his word when it speaks, and it is never out of context. It is never anything that is that will, is diametrically opposed to His Word. His way. you, I mean, you've got as we read His Word and study and walk with the Lord every day. I'm telling you, when you're around somebody all the time, my husband and I have been married 49 years. We know each other. We really know each other. Almost what the person's going to think before they think it. You know, we we but we've been married for all these years. We, we know each other. We know how we think. We both love the Lord. We both read God's Word. We both believe it and want to follow it. This is the thing the Lord has spoken to my heart. And, and I, so I just uh, think the law of the... I, I want to bring this to your mind too. The law of the jungle. And now the Satan, you know, our, our, our old Lucifer, he is a, a horrible enemy. But we don't have to live in fear and trembling because we have our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have the whole... The Heavenly Father and we have the precious Holy Spirit I'm telling you what that threefold cord cannot be broken we are so thankful we have the Lord we can walk in faith and victory but I want to talk about the law of the jungle this is how it can help I we read when my husband and I were in full-time child evangelism we had a little story about Toto the monkey and Toto the monkey wouldn't pay attention to what when he was trying to be trained by the others in the, there in, in the jungle. Just a little story, but it's a true story. It, it's truth as far as we're talking about. Never look into the eyes of a snake. And you know the old serpent, the devil we think about when he came to the Garden of Eden. He was beautiful to look upon. But anyway, you think about this in the law of the jungle. This is the truth. In, in the jungle, never look into the eyes of a snake. What happens? They said that snake 
kind of let us stand up like and just start moving like this and how that, uh, well in this particular story it had was, was talking about little Toto kept looking at, as he was sitting on the limb and here come the snake he was up there and looking, and he looked into the eyes of the snake. You know, that's what you cannot listen or look at anything the devil offers. And say, well, if you just look, no. If you look, if you can get your attention, that's what he wants to get your attention. If you look, and before long, Toto began to weave when he got sleepy and he fell off of the, of the limb he was on and the snake ate him. Well, this is, uh, you know, that's just a little story. But there's a truth of do not listen to the devil. Do not look into the eyes. Would well, just come over here? No, don't come. You stay in the Word of God. Be faithful to the house of God. Be careful of the friends that you choose. And now you can be friends. You can be friendly with people. But I'm not going to have, you know, strong, uh, you know, like business dealings and all with somebody that I know is deceptive and all, and is going to listen to the voice of Satan. I tell you what. And so, uh, know this: the law of the jungle. Never look into the eyes of the devil. They will mesmerize you and put you to sleep. It sounds like our adversary. Be very, very cautious. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But that's not what our wonderful Savior came to do. He is there to help us and to guide us. In fact, to, as the scripture tells us in John 10 and 10 in the New Living Translation, the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Looking unto Jesus, I like this scripture, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look into, into his wonderful eyes and hear his distinctive voice. And I've already jumped down to, to the later part of my message, but I'm just going to follow, let the Lord guide and direct. Be, I am concerned about, and I, I like this when it talks about uh, they, they follow his voice only and they, they would not go with a stranger. Stranger danger. You think about that, you hear a lot about that today. They teach children, stay away from strangers. You know, parents have to teach and train them, and, and, and I appreciate that. It's good. It's a good thing to, to tell them. But I, the same thing with us, stranger danger. You, we know the voice of God because we know His Word. Okay, now, uh, my sheep know my, well, my sheep are we're known by name. The Bible tells us here in John 10, 3, uh, 10, in John 10 and 3, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads him out. He knows us by name, and I, he knows our voice. He knows when we call out. We don't have to announce to the Lord, Lord, my name is Karen. Here I am today. You can do that, but you don't have to. He knows me. He knows me by name. He knows my voice. He knows me by sight. Our good shepherd leads us. He goes before us. He never drives us. I'd like you to take something that this kind of was laid on my heart to do. I'd like you, if you have a piece of paper there, or if you don't have it, it's okay. But just write in a, in a, in a line, put S-H-E-E-P, sheep. And uh, I take for that S, he sees us. He sees us. I don't care where we are. I don't care what situation we may be in. We think nobody knows. There's things you cannot tell. You cannot tell anybody. I'm going to tell you, he sees us. He sees us when we're in danger. He sees us when we're rejoicing. He sees us. We are visible to him at all times. There's no situation that the adversary can ever get, a, get us in and that the Lord cannot see us. We are fully visible to him. In the H, he hears us. We may be almost unable to speak. We are so weary. We're exhausted. Or we don't know what to pray. We're just in such straits. Sometimes you're just weeping. He hears us. Yes, he hears us. His ears are always open with love. And he's listening to us. He's listening. And the E, S-H-E, he expects us to call. And even if we're in a situation that we thought, I got here by myself, I can't call on the Lord. Oh, that's you better call on him. He expects us to call on him. And yes, we say, I'm in this fix and I shouldn't be in it. I'm calling on you. I'm trusting in you and believing you. I want to get in right relationship. And that's always what our Heavenly Father wants to do. And that's what the, the Good Shepherd, He always wants to bring us back into right relationship. That's what He's after. He expects us to call. And for the second E, He examines us. 
he checks us to see of any damages and he checks us to a lot of, you know how the shepherds in the natural they check their sheep for mites and other diseases or any kind of uh, uh, any kind of we say any kind of a critter some could got had gotten in or some kind of an insect or something they say that sometimes these things get into the, their ears and they're just drive them crazy well he's checking he examines us because he wants to get us well he wants us healthy and for the pea and sheep he puts us on our feet when we are cast down and in danger of suffocating this is they tell me one of the great dangers of sheep and i've mentioned it in, in other messages before but the Lord just, it's just made it so real to me. And we get in situations sometimes we don't know what to do. And just like the, in the sheep, uh, what they will do sometimes, they will be, and then they will roll over and they can't get up. They will actually roll over on their back and they can't get up. And the danger is the way their system is made, they will literally die if they can't get rolled over on their side and get up. And so what the shepherd has to do, he has to be watching. He's very, he loves his sheep. So he goes out, he knows them by name. He calls them. If and he knows who's missing, and he begins to search for them. He's listening, you know, you need to call, and they're calling out. But he sees, he knows where they are, but they're calling out. And that's what we're supposed to do. We don't just say, well, Lord, you see me, get here. We say, Lord, I'm in need. I know that you're my helper. Thank you that you're my helper. And what that shepherd will do when he finds that sheep, and he takes that crook, if he can, if it's a long ways down, he'll take, you know, he'll put that big old stick down with the crook, and he'll get that sheep, get them to roll over, and get when he can actually get down to them, get them rolled over, maybe on the side, he'll get them up on their feet, and they're fine. They are, and that's what sometimes we're on our back, and it's a dangerous situation, and you just feel helpless. You're on your back. Uh, you know, sometimes you take an animal, like a dog, or something, they'll roll over in fear, and they'll just be on their back, you know, and they're very, very vulnerable. We have to watch spiritually. We can be on our back and be in a very vulnerable situation where we, we could be we can be terribly hurt. But that's what our Heavenly Father and our Good Shepherd, He just rolls us over. And He doesn't begin to beat us over the head and tell how crazy you were and tell us how stupid we were, or how awful we, this shouldn't have happened. I'm not going to say He just said, oh, that's okay. He doesn't. He might say, now, how did you get there? Let's talk about it. But I tell you what, he's there to help us. I know that. He puts us on our feet and we're cast down or in and we're in danger. He puts us on our feet and he helps us. And then, you know what, there is the Great Commission. Just like Jesus, uh, when he called the disciples together and, and there he, he had been raised from the dead and all, he had returned. He's there for 40 days and he's going to be going back. But there was a place they were to meet. And I want you to listen to this. I love this in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20. This is our Lord. He's, this is not just for those, those 11 disciples. Remember, Judas was gone. But now we have these 11 disciples, and he gave them what we call the Great Commission. Listen to what Jesus said to them. Then the 11 disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. That's the key, worship him. But some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You know what? He had already told them that he was with them. And he would already, already said that. What was one place I read? He had already told them. Uh, the, he, he was with them. Now he's telling them, he's em, em, emphasizing this, I am with you always. So make disciples of all the nations. That's what I love is that as his sheep, you know, he's not doing everything. You know, we're, we're, we're the sheep. We're out there. We're, we're gathering people in. Just like today, we're ministering. And one of the ladies uh, on, that may be listening before it's over with, uh, Kelly had told me she was, had, was praying for the Lord to help her. And she just felt like she needed some spiritual help. And and, a, and I thank God of all, there are all the places out there the Lord led that he, for some reason, chose that she would find a, a, a minute, one of these messages we had brought, and we had become friends through that. I, I'm telling you, the Lord is telling us to make disciples, and this is what he told them, make disciples of all the nations. It's not just your little bunch. I tell you, think there are so many nations in the world, and more nations as people, others break off and form their own nation. 
So, and that's what Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you know what? Everybody, they may not all be preaching, but our life is preaching. And so it doesn't matter if you're in the military and you're transferred off to another country or there are businessmen that are that go all these different, I mean, there's just so many, ways. and tourists and whatever the Lord leads and directs. But wherever we go, we spread that good news about Jesus Christ. Make disciples. He said it was very clear, and he said, "Make disciples of all the nations." You know, it's something discipleship is missing in some places. They want to tell people about Jesus, and then they may give their heart to the Lord, but then they have no teaching, no training, maybe no church. I'm telling you, they'll fall away. But what we need to do, he said, "Make disciples of all these nations." He said, "I." I, I, I love this. Make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he said, teach these new disciples. Teaching. The teaching is missing so much nowadays. Many churches have, have just totally done away with Sunday school. Shocking. Dangerous, in my view. Very dangerous. He said, teach these new, new, new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. All these commands I've given you. Because they're good. They're for our benefit. They are they help us to be strong and healthy. And I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I will never leave you. That's what he, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. Even though he was going to uh, ascend to the Father. He said, you, I've left you the Holy Spirit that can be with you at all times, living within you. Thank the Lord for that. I am with you always. My people, I've read sometimes in the scripture, he said, my people, uh, that they wouldn't seek his face, uh, and they, they weren't interested. I, I love how that there are those, and he said, call unto me, and I will answer you. There is no busy signal. I love it. And I worked in a call center for several years, and, and you know, uh, the calls were taken in the order that they had come in. It's not like that with Jesus. Now, now Jesus doesn't sometimes say, well, I, I prayed and nothing happened. You know, we begin to we wait upon the Lord. He knows the right time, right place, and He's got to get us in a right in a right position. And I, I love this song that I'd heard. I don't recall the exact name of it, but said people wondered what what's happening when I pray and nothing seems to be happening. Well, what is happening? I'll tell you what is happening. The the song says like the Lord is He's 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 building bridges. He's tearing down walls. Various things of this nature. Things are going on. There's other people involved who are praying. Uh, when, when we're sending up a prayer and there's other people involved that are going to make something happen where the Lord is working all along. May we just be faithful to him, know he is working and know that we have him while he's working. We have him. We can continue to grow as we wait upon him. I've had some prayers, yes, were answered very, very quickly. We're thankful for that. I'm thankful for the cleansing, healing flow of the Holy Spirit. And it is extremely, it is active today. It's active in my life. It can be active in your life as you accept Him as accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and baptize in the Holy Spirit. There's nothing like living for Jesus. Pray without ceasing, daily fellowship. How can I pray without ceasing? It's just all during the day that your whole conversation is about. And there are some people that, that you know they want to uh, live for the Lord and give and then they want to go do their own thing. Oh no. You just live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, love the Lord, serve Him, and the whole day you're you're just talking to Him. I mean, just the whole day, throughout the day. You know, I, I don't just say, well, this morning I went and prayed. Well, I'm not done. <laughs> you know, throughout the day, I'm going to be sending out prayer. It may not be out loud. It may or may not be out loud. I'll just be thinking, I just love you, Lord, and thank you for your word. And, Lord, I was thinking about this today, and I appreciate this, and I appreciate this answer prayer. You know, just, you know, like you talk to a friend. I'll tell you, he's my Savior. I appreciate him. I want to love him and serve him. I'm thankful, Lord, for the cleansing, healing flow of the Holy Spirit. And pray without ceasing that daily fellowship. And that's what I said earlier, and it was my summary. We'll go to the summary now. Uh, the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy, but my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life, John 10, 10, the New Living Translation. And I love the scripture, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look unto him this way, weak, and hear his distinctive voice. You do not have to worry about AI being becoming an artificial intelligence, and you won't know the voice of God. You know his voice if you know his word when he speaks to you. I'm so thankful that we do. And remember, it is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve, to achieve his purpose. Praise the Lord. That's Philippians 2.13. 
the J.B. Phillips translation. I wanted to mention one thing here before I leave. I was going to, I'd forgotten it earlier. I don't know if, oh, if you've ever used one of these kind of, this, this is a, just, I guess you could just call it a pastry sheet. And I ordered this and it was about $9 and I'm sure they're higher now. But it's silicone. It's one of the best things I ever had. I just love it. It sticks down, but yet it doesn't, it does, it's really, really nice. So if, if you are looking for one, you don't have one, uh, it's called a, I think I just ordered it, said, I just went in and typed in silicone. I, I just typed in a pastry sheet and different ones came up and I saw, I thought it's only $9, probably won't be any good. I love it. Love it. And it has all the, like the, the me uh, measurements. Uh, it's got, got that. And then it's also got uh, the temperatures. It's got all kinds of things on it. Anyway, I think you would really like it if you're needing a pastry sheet. I want to, I want to recommend that. Okay, now that I have the, this, the uh, dough has been has been kneaded, and it it was moving, so I know it's alive, and I want to be alive in Christ, don't you? I want to move every day, all day. I want to be moving in Him. Now I'm going to put this over in this bowl, and it is and my husband and I. We're going to go have. We call it our date. It's our Friday date. And uh, yeah, we still date. We've been married 49 years, a couple of months, but we're still, we still date. We're going to go on our date. This is going to be rising, and then we're going to come back, and then it's going. We'll have risen double when we come back. And what I'm going to do? I'm going to punch it down again, and I'm going to make then some rolls, and I'll have some pans that are going to be. They'll, I'll already have them oiled. And I'll I will I'll make the little, make the little rolls that I want, and then I'll cover them. Always cover your bread that is rising, because if you don't, if if wind hits it, any kind of wind, boom, it'll kill it just like you popped the balloon. It, I've seen it happen. I've told told you the story, so I won't tell it again. But uh, then I, after these have risen double, then I will put the heat, I'll preheat the oven to 350 degrees, and it will then I'll put these in and they'll cook for, I cook them for 28 minutes. 30 makes them a little browner than I like. My husband likes them much browner. But since I give these out, I uh, give them away, uh, I, not everybody likes them as brown as he does. So I cook 28 minutes works good. And what I like, they'll be, they'll have that nice crust on them. I like that. And you know, uh, that's the way the Lord, he just helps us. When we go through these times, it looks impossible. He's doing something. He's making something tasty. And that's what we want the people to be able to taste and see that the Lord is good. Because that's we should be our lives are light, our light, you know, that we, if we can withstand, you know, we have kind of this crust on here that they don't push down really. But that's why we'll have we don't have a crust for our meanness, but we've been toughened and you know, through the trials and tribulations and things that you go through and you come through it with, with joy and gladness, but you know there's you're toughened up and the Lord can use us. He didn't want to People, they're always grumbling and complaining why everything went wrong. You know, it's just life. It's called life. Things happen. But he's with us all the way. Rejoice! Rejoice! My sheep know my voice. You don't have to worry about AI, artificial intelligence, as long as you love the Lord and walk with him and know his word. And you pray daily. Love you. See you next week, the Lord willing.